Welcome to the Market Geometry Mentoring Sessions in the morning. It's October. Actually, it's October 5th. It's well into October. And uh, it's still well dark here in Chicago. Nice, brisk fall day. I uh, don't think we're going to have a frost this week, but I could be wrong. But uh, we're going to see what the markets are going to give us. How about that? So let me take a look at questions. People, we're talking about... What do we want to do this morning? It looks like people want to do a split and they want to make sure we do some bar by bars. I'm sounding sexy. Ooh, thank you. <laughs> okay, I'll stay away from the a couple of the currencies and we'll come back and do a bar by bar a little bit after seven. How's that? And we'll go through some other stuff. All right, so we have bonds in front of us. And I always do this uh, with bonds, especially because I'm doing ticks. Let me just double, make sh double sure and make sure I had... Uh, I guess I did. Had adequate data. Now, on 144, we made a right, take a, take a look now. This is this big, fat median line off the major pivots. And this was the mountain, no problem. Let me do a B... C, D, then click on this and fix this darn thing. It's supposed to be Fibonacci, and it's supposed to be used as default. And I should have 1 to 1 clicked once. And C to D should be 1. If you've never used this tool. And the Fib should be 1.618, or 161. Point eight. Let's see what we got. And there's our one to one from there. And then we can grab the one to one from here and go one here out of the. Got to grab the right tool. Yeah, what? There we go. We got to get to the top of the coil. Come back. I swear to God, I pressed that. One more time. It's going to be a Tim is a clutch day. Grab the high, come back down. And I'll have something pressed right here. That one to one. All right, so there we go. So we made it, I would guess, the contracted 0.618 right here, which is right at the median line. Yeah, I am feeling better. Thank you all for the great wishes. Uh, we're at the median line. Now the question is, is that it? First thing we want to do, take a look at structure. I'm gonna dump this one because this one didn't. This one didn't tell us anything. There we go. We do have this coil here, and you can see actually the rim of the canyon bisected perfectly this trading range that we had. Probably would have been helpful to have that in to begin with. We'll have to pay. We'll have to pay attention to that when it violates a rim like that, and if it then oscillates around, does it double the range? That's pretty interesting. Um, then we popped up. Here, we came right to the median line where it's supposed to run right out of energy, where we come right down to, right back down to the 2575 line. I don't know which one this is. I don't have the terminology down yet, but uh, and you can see it just oscillates, it's been oscillating around this 2575 line, so it's no surprise that it's slowed down here. You can put it in a sliding parallel, but your eyes can see it. So now you have to work with this and go, okay, is this going to hold? If it doesn't, if this doesn't hold, then we probably have a date with this area here, I would think. What do you think? Does anybody know Is there a cooler way to draw, you know, an ensign? Is there a cooler way to draw long arrows? 
I'm sorry, an e-signal. An e-signal you can draw like long vectors and that have an arrow on one end. Can you, I can draw these little bitty arrows. Can you draw actually long arrows? And I just am too stupid to figure it out. If you do, email with, email me and tell me how to do it. I Otherwise, I'll have to email Howard and say, Howard, could you make some real arrows, please? Some lengthy arrows. Okay, so I'll, Paul, I'll, I'll email unless somebody figures out. Segment, then select arrow. Oh. So this. It's probably right in front of me, but I'll be darned if I see it. No, that didn't work. Well, you can give me an example. Send me an example. Morning. Hey, Mary, how are you? Mary, I have a I have an AVI coming to you as soon as I'm finished. I, I'm sorry, I completely forgot. And I slept the whole weekend away. God bless me. All right, so that's our ID in bonds. If this baseline doesn't hold, we're, we got, I think we have a date of destiny, so to speak, with this lower median line parallel. Yes, I, I think I'm feeling better. Okay, so let's take a look at... Uh, for those of you on MetaTrader, here's a 30-minute yen. Volatile. Let me just refresh. Okay, and it's correct. That's fine. Yeah, the bears are looking good. The White Sox are gone. Cubs, gone. <laughs> but we're happy about the Bears, aren't we? Aren't we, Mark? And uh, we had this nice range, and you can see basically all we've done is G. Three times the range. Unable to get down and fill in the Grand, well, it's not the Grand Mountain. What would, the, what would we call this? Pike's Peak? What data feed do I use? No, you can always ask questions. No, Philip, never ever feel like you can't. Believe me, because I ask the stupidest questions back to you guys. Yeah, Chicago Olympics, gone. <laughs> um, I use uh, eSignal for these. I have several data feeds, but for this I use eSignal because most people do. Um, Pike's Peak has snow this morning. Yeah, that's what I heard. I even heard from Shane or Kraft uh, uh, this, past, this past week. I think he's been trying to just stay away because I'm so uh, so beat up. But um, I know he, when I talked to him a week ago, he had, he was driving through Utah and getting through going through all kinds of snow. So uh, if, if you don't think winter's here in America, it be on its way. Okay, so here's the big, 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 big boy upsloping median line. We didn't quite make it to the upper median line, pair, actually to the median line, excuse me. And you can see now we're becoming less efficient, but yeah, I don't know if I'm that worried about it. Uh, let's, just for chuckle, let's shift it. Like that any better? Doesn't do that much for me. Cuts through a little bit here, but I don't think either one of them are. In the end, I think this median line is going to be inconsequential. But I'll put it there just in case. Oh, on thir okay. Bart Simpson's head. Um, on Thursday's bar by bar, you told us not to be happy when the bar is moving in our favor and not to be nervous when it's going against us. On Friday, I thought, Tim says, don't let price movement affect your feelings. Just let the trade mature. And I had a record day. All right, there you go. And he had a record day. You had a record day, and you didn't have much stress. Yeah. See, I think that's a good part of the key trading. And I'll, I'll, I will say this. Um, those of you that have seen Murad's posts or seen, I don't know if we put the videos up yet. We have some cool videos of actual trades by Murad. And you might wonder, why? how can he swing so free? Because he has no stress. It's not what he does for a living. This is second thought to him, not in a bad way, but... You know, he just he just wanted to be a he wanted to just trade as well. So, you know, if you can get 
to the point where this is just about slow down, relax, look for the trade, find something that you can see, swing and hit the ball. Then don't be too high when it goes your way. Don't be too low when it goes against you. And let the trades mature. Follow the plan. Know when to get out. It becomes a lot easier. But if you're fighting with all those emotional things, you're carrying so much baggage, that's the hard work. That's why, you know, why, so I say master your tools, master yourself. That second part is so hard. Richard says he's learned a huge amount in the last few days just going back to the sessions. Hey, just watch them to death, guys. And Karen, you'd know that better than anybody, right? Because that's what you do for a living. Well, I'm glad, Magnus. You know, you, you, if you carry this stuff, it's like carrying, you know, a thousand pounds on your back up a mountain. So in the end, we have a couple things going on. I think this big blue upsloping meeting line is pretty, pretty meaningless. What is meaningful? I think this is top of the mountain. And we're headed for it, looks like. And also the top of this range and or peaking just above it. If you get one, you'll probably get, it's like a two-pack. If you get one, you'll probably get the other. So we'll see if it heads up there. Was there a trade? <sighs> gap higher, gap lower, traded out of the hole, they filled the gap. Basically, they flushed the stops. You gentlemen in uh, New Zealand and Australia did a very good job. Gentlemen and ladies, I should say, did a very good job. Flushed the stops, ran it back higher, took them out. Now we're in this quiet period consolidating we'll see what the morning brings is there a corner trade shaping up uh, we're not in an area where price should run out of energy so well there's a consolidation trade here let me mark it if you want to think about it that way and think if it stays And you want to do something with the range. That's one thing. However, we've already blown through the corner trade, which would have come right at the upper median line parallel. It needs to be in an area where price is going to run out of energy. So either here at the median line, here at the upper median line parallel, or at the canyon top or mountain bottom. Or maybe up in here. This is just consolidation right here. How's that? Recent low was the quarter line. Oh, okay. Good eyes. So maybe this median line does have something to say. Maybe it's just me that doesn't have anything to say. Good catch. There you go. You see that gap opening and go snag it. Now, the only problem is, of course, what you're going to do for a stop. But I see your point. If you're brave, clue, we are not, Peter says, clue. We are not in an area that is running out of energy. That's important. That's in right. In, in other words, do you really want to throw your money out right here? It's probably best to look at another chart. You might want to mark it and say, maybe there's something interesting going on if we get up into this area. But in here, we don't have any high probability anything going on yet. See, point on the red is also 2575. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So it's anchored. Okay, so this blue line, I take it back. All those ne negative things I said about this blue line, I'll just, I take it back. So we watch this chart. Yep. Running out of energy. Okay. Andrews said and proved that there are specific areas mathematically where price should run out of energy. We've extended that to mountains and canyons as well. Andrews said price should run out of energy at the upper median line parallel or the median line or the lower median line parallel or... Similarly, action reaction lines, the center line, the reaction line, or the action line, right? What we did was we turned that horizontally, so to speak, and we started to do crayon drawing. And we've drawn in these big, wide canyons and mountains, mountains and canyons, rather. And uh, what we said is they work wonderfully, as just, just like action reaction lines, as magnets, 
And also, that's where, op where price often turns on a dime. So, price should run out of energy at either upper median line parallel, median line, lower median line parallel, or test of a baseline, whether it's up above or up above, uh, 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 up below. I can't say that. Up above or down below. If you're in the middle of nowhere, unless you think this is a range trade, and you might think this is a range trade, that's okay. Look how narrow this range is. Do you really want to trade for 25 pips? I don't. My stop would be 10. So it's not a matter of 2 to 1. I might be able to squeeze 2 to 1 out of it, but it's only 25 pips. By the time I turn the bus around, it's just not worth it. So running out of energy, I'm not in an area when I, where I'm counting an, a, a, a coil trade, um, a, a, a corner trade where we're running out of energy this is this might have been this isn't so this is on watch now that's right philip so me median line to where it's parallels and then mountains or canyons give good potential for running out of energy that's right yep all right so let's grab another one uh I'm trying to stay away from a couple candidates that we might use for bar by bar. Let's go to Canada 240 to see what's going on. Now, what we said on Friday, let me just refresh this real quick. Okay, good. My data is refreshed. Canada, I've noticed, in fact, if you think if you think back about it, if you were here when we first started crayon drawing, I believe actually. We beat Canada to death in crayon drawing. I think I think we crayon, we did crayon drawing every day in Canada because it tends to spawn for some reason. And that's where I think I first noticed it. There's these big empty blocks that get filled. And you can see here, you could be generous and say, look, this baseline was filled. There's nothing wrong with that because that also, if you look to the left, excuse me, is this low. Now take a look up here. We have this high. Here's one. That was obviously filled. The first time around. So we can delete it. Here's our next baseline. And notice, Phil, remember you were asking about running out of energy? Look where we ran out of energy. Right at the median line. Bang, dead on. Just like in the bonds two examples ago. So when canyons and mountains fail to fill, often the center line draw from these failures often describe price frequency. You are correct, sir. And you've seen Kraft do that. Do that. Um, I'm just trying to decide if I can grab. I might be able to grab even more. This isn't bad either. How about this? Yeah, Paul says uh, he's noticed that Canada does present lots of high probability trades. That's why I tell people in mentoring, you know what? Put Canada in your trading portfolio. Also, it gives you a lot of a lot of nice nice ranges to trade as well as some great running trades, so to speak. All right, so I think this is not, and Rebecca likes this line as well. So I think this is a very nice looking center line. Absolutely. Let's change this to, uh, let's change this to green, green for money. So now it, no, it spawned a lower high. Do you think we'll go back and make it to this baseline? What do you think? Yes, I could draw the, draw the modified slope. Hang on, I'll draw. I will draw it in. Good point. And I may not even... Look, I even did colors, guys. Ooh. And it worked, basically. Yeah. There you go. change these to uh, what I wanted, which was this. Not bad. Not bad at all. The modified 
did a fairly good job of catching it. Very nice. Would I have shorted it due to a small stop? Let's look at the stop. So 109, uh, well, I can just do it this way. 109, 59, high, 109.88. Well, you are talking about 30 pips. This is a 240, so 30 pips for for uh, 240 in the Canada, and we're only talking about 10 pips, not 12.50. So it's 10 bucks, not 12.50. So it's it's not expensive. This is not an expensive 240 stop. So yeah, this is this is one where you might have your gun out if if you were bullish on Canada, bearish on the U.S. Think it'll get down to the baseline? What do we think? I got a no from George. Upsloping shift looks good as well. I need to take some of these off. Hang on. I'm going to strangle myself. Okay, so the upslope, oh, up, let's do the upsloping shift. Actually, the median line, look at the, look at just the straight upsloping median line. Grabs this top, grabs these lows. What's wrong with that? Yeah, what, but what's wrong with that one? Nice long opportunity, might be. How about right? Yeah, how about right in this area right here? Parity by December thirty-first. Well, it'll take us that long to get our glass. Hey, Reese, still listening? I need. Uh, I'm going to send you a logo design. I need. What we decided to do instead of having a party, I'm going to send cases of beer to all the Canadian and Australian banks if, if and when either and or both of them hit parity. And then, also, for all the members, I'm going to have you make uh, mugs or cups or whatever you can make with a market geometry logo that says, uh, here's the parody or something like that. Whatever. that work? Can you fix me up, buddy? I'll do it. Mary, I'll give you Reese's. Mary, I'll give you Reese's uh, email address. Reese, do me a favor. Just drop Mary at marketgeometry.com an email and say, I'm Reese. And Mary will send you uh, the logo, the whole shot, and then we'll talk about what to put on it. Thank you. Thank you much. All right. That way, everybody. Oh, I know there's a beer called Fat Cat. There's also Moose Piss, by the way. I don't know if you've ever drank Moose Piss. It's quite good. I have a Moose Piss hat. Got that when I was... Uh, up with Royal Bank of Canada drinking. That's the last time I can remember having a hangover. <clears throat> Does it matter now that we now have lower lows before we go long? That's a good question. All right, so let's say. Fat Cat seems so relevant for bankers. Absolutely, Paul. All right. Um, we also have higher lows, though. We have lower lows and higher high, higher lows. So what are we doing? We're consolidating. So now the real question is, we're going to play this. It's like ding, 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 ding. Which is in charge here now? See, that's the question. Key says, when you're looking for a short term, and this is making lower highs and higher lows, this is a great question, with good touches on the up and down slipping forks, do you wait for the break? That's one possibility. The other possibility, well, it's a wedge tightening, but the other possibility is you take a look and go, okay, I'm here, so I'm at 107.18, and the top is at 109.5. I got 200 some points. So if you're short-term trading, you still got plenty. If the if the stop is small, you still got plenty of room to dance in here, okay? So you could play either side at the moment. There is a point when you get down in here where you want to say, if it hasn't broken out, just leave me alone and just turn to the next one, right? Yeah, I, I would agree with Paul. At the moment, it's tradable. The wedge is more than wide enough. 
So if you get a small if you get a small stop with a with a trade potential that you like, a strategy that you understand and know the statistics, go ahead and take it. But remember when you get up into this area not to get too excited and go, Yahoo, this sucker's going to the moon. You should be thinking about, gee, should I take my money here? See, I think in this case, you probably want to be racking your money up. Let's say you got long in here. I'd be racking my money up in here. And I'd get out of the way. No, I, I, I'd be below the other fork and below this top. I'd be inside of it. How's that? Paul says he had the same setup in gold a couple of weeks back and got three different trades in a tightening wedge until the wedge got too tight for a nice profit. Yeah. How about a sliding parallel with the lower median line? Well, yeah, sure, you could do that. Absolutely. If you want to be cheap like me, yeah, absolutely. You can trade off of that. Two bars before this have closed great separation. Uh, that's good separation. That's good separation. You could buy here. 107 with a stop below 107. What's a 30 pip stop? You might even be able to afford this. I mean, eye it up. All right. So, by the way, Sim, do you got my email? Yeah. No. Send me an email back. With the with the email address you should be at because I sent you an email with five. Well, I sent it last yesterday evening with five different uh, dates and times. Okay, email me back. Sorry, we'll figure it out. Okay, so let's real quick look at commodities. Then we'll do a, we'll finish out with bar by bar. We'll come back and do a currency bar by bar. Because I've got like five dates for you, okay? As well as Chan. Chan's already checked in. All right, here we are. So, oil... problem for me 7132 I probably should have been sli selling the sliding parallel um, the problem is I'm a little bit short on uh, intelligence and sleep um, this is within my two and a half buck parameter I really wanted it to get up in here but this is really probably where I should have been adding to the short this looks like a magnificent short now Dang it. If you expect weaker U.S. dollar, don't I think oil will go up? I don't know that there's any correlation. If you know about it, a correlation, God bless you. I don't actually ever see any of those correlations. That doesn't mean they're not there. I just don't think about them that way. I look at the price action on each one and go, this chart looks like it's going to go up. This chart looks like it's going to go wherever it's going to go, and I don't really think that much about it. I think the only thing, the only, when you guys hear me, uh, for example, being interviewed at uh, uh, Market, uh, sorry, at Money Show, and I talk about, you know, I think the catalyst may be X, Y, or Z, I'm not thinking about correlation. I'm thinking about capital flight. So, for example, I think what's going to be, what's going to show us that the stock market sell-off is really going to begin is if you see the dollar crash and the bonds go at the same time, you better run for cover. Paul says, I have my own thoughts, but do you ever allow chart A to influence you on chart B? That is, if you are short crude, does it make you wary of being bullish Canada? Personally, I consider them their own right, but I'm interested. Okay, here's what I do. And actually, I, I'm sure I did this in one of the seminars. I had this huge oil short and I kept waiting for the Canada to react but I did not take a position I waited 
the Canada has to stand on its own. Even though I'm looking at oil going, you know, Canada should react. Well, it took two weeks. And I would have eaten it twice, probably. Okay? So at least Chef remembers it. Yeah, you, you, you got to, you gotta, even if you have an idea that there that oil should influence Canada or the metals should influence Aussie or whatever, each chart, the price action has to stand on its own. Krista says, would you take profits in crude shorts at test of second reaction line or filling a mountain base or even lower? Um, I'm, I'm hunting for bear here, so I'm not even interested until we get down here. I might hide from structure if we're running down here, but at the moment, I'm, I'm hiding. I go, I'm going to here or lower. Yep. Yeah, that was about a year ago, Chef. That was a, but that was a big trade. It takes the fundamental guys longer to catch up. Yeah. All right, so let's look at uh, beans somebody was talking about. Okay, so the, here's our Novies. There we go, finally. Finally. And here's why. How many people uh, either live in the United States or live by farmers? I should say live in the United States and drive by farm fields. Okay. So if you drive by a soybean field. Yes, Krishna, I saw it before. If you drive by a soybean, well, strawberries, no, that doesn't count. If you drive by, drive by a soybean field, they look you know, like big bushes, big green bushes, about knee high when they're good. And they're all fluffy and pretty, all right? All we need in Chicago is skilling. There you go, Mark. Uh, my, my children and I were out yesterday getting pumpkins, yesterday afternoon. Uh, my, my wife and I and children. And as we were driving by the farmer's fields, we were looking at a field, and my daughter said, Hey, Dad, is that oats or beans? When they are ready to harvest, you want to leave them in the, in the field as long as possible because the lower the moisture, the more you get at the granary, okay? When they're ready to harvest, they actually look almost like wheat or oats that are ready to harvest. The, the, everything shrivels up. The only thing left standing is the stalk. The beans themselves pull down the sides. So they look like grains ready to harvest. The soybeans around here look like oat fields. They're, they're you know, that brown, and they look like standing up oat, oats. Cleveland won the gay game. We beat D.C. and some other city. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but okay. Um, so beans are finally letting it go. Uh, I, I, is this, is this dopey Tim should have been short here? I don't know. I, maybe I'm, maybe I've missed a couple of my portfolio trades that I was hunting because I, you know, I'm just not, uh, I haven't been a hundred percent for three weeks. So if that happens, it happens. Yeah. And there's no stop. Well, for hunting, that's a bit expensive. Let's, let's take a look. 9.38 to 40 cents. See, the problem is on this one, you got this down here. I think we're going to take this out. But you'd be, it'd be at 2 to 1 at best. You'd be risking 40 cents to make about 50 cents. I, at this point, 1 to 1 doesn't cut it for me. I need five to one, so I need to believe that this thing is actually going to six fifty, and I do think that, but on the chart, I don't know that. I sound like I'm back to three hundred percent. Well, I'm not doing that much trading, chef. I just I'm portfolioing a little bit here and there. Is it consistent in harvest that price will drop seasonally? No, Keith. Actually, sometimes at harvest, let's say for example, you get really wet fields. They can't get in the field uh, to harvest them, so the beans or the corn will rot. Then, actually, you get huge moves up. Because these are Novi beans. These have to be delivered in November. So um, if, if the beans were sitting in the field and it was raining hard and the farmers couldn't get in the field to harvest them, they'd be dead. Yeah. They're not going anywhere. You can't get them out. Then they, they rot, literally. What they end up being is pig feet. All right, let's grab uh, gold.
Oh, that G20, boy, they're really effective, aren't they? They're just giving you opportunities to... I'm sure the Chinese are saying thank you to the IMF and G20 every time they push it down 20 bucks, don't you think? I'm not even going to uh, do anything on this chart. Let's look at the 240. Range trading, but run back up above 1,000. You can see the baseline held. We're right in the middle of nowhere. Do you want to do anything here? No, you're in the middle of nowhere. Wait. Andy says, non-farm payroll takedown fired, backfired. Lots of bidders under 1,000. Yeah, why? Well, absolutely. I think the Chinese are there both hands. Well, hey, I, I don't have a silver. I don't think I have a silver chart up here. Um, Andy, what would be front much silver? What would you be trading? Yes, it is, Clement. I mean, uh, Sim. That's fine. Gotcha. All right, so... Um, No, that's not right. The hell is that? E mini S and P's. Oi. There we go. Little quick silver? Yes. So silver, you can see had very little reaction. Take care, Keith. I just forgot to add it. I'm sorry, Andy. I, I, I fixed it. That's right. Had very little reaction to non-farm payrolls. Um, and I think probably we're, you know, let's take a look. Structure. What do we have above us? Top of the canyon. Top of the canyon. Top of the canyon. We've got a baseline right here. You can see the Y just got blown out. I'm going to shift it anyway, just for chuckles. Not awful. As sloppy as silver is, that's not awful. That's the modified shift. But we're playing ping pong now between this canyon rim and this baseline. And your clue will be if we take out this upper median line parallel. Or probably take out the median line where we're going. There you go. Upsloper, a tiny upsloper, Krishna. You can draw that in. It's not a corner trade though, yet. It, you know what it is right here at the moment. It's a it's a wedgie. Oh, reset. Come back. Well, okay, then doesn't like that. If, Be that way. I'll fix you. There you go. We got a wedgie here. Me, I think this is a good time to be out of the way. How about that? Paul says, as sloppy as silver is, it is still to it's totally plays by the rules of our trading tools, forks, range lines, etc. It's just a dangerous animal and needs a ton of focus, discipline, and good stops. See, I think that's where I absolutely agree. I think that's where people get into trouble. Is where I see people chew themselves to death in silver is buying breakouts, selling breakouts, just doing stupid stuff, retail stuff. 
And unfortunately, and, and Paul and Andy and I have talked about this, I'm shocked at the number of retail traders that just pile into the silver market. I have no idea what attracts retail traders to the silver market, but it's like one of the markets. So if you just relax, slow, slow down, and look for the real opportunities, big setups that you know, and stay out of the way in the middle like this, and wait for, you know, just sit there waiting patiently with your gun. It's actually quite tradable. But if you just jump in there, they think it's a cheap way to trade gold. Well, that's not a, I hadn't thought about that. Retail stuff. It's a great phrase, Vin, Chef says. Okay, Mary, there you go. The retail fluff. The shine, Ron says. There you go. Um, you know, for example, I did a study with the NFA's uh, approval and guidance. This would have been about, oh, I don't know. Well, I was with the Commodities Corporation 15 years ago. Where we opened, they gave us, ready? They gave us 1,000 retail accounts to look at without names on them. And we got to look at their months, X number of months. And we got to look at their trades. And what we wanted to know is, did people lose money because all their trades were bad? You know, what, we were trying to look at the quality of trades. Is it just because they were just awful? And actually, the truth is, it's because they were taking, for the most part, it was because they were taking trades with no risk-reward ratio at all. They just take out break trade, breakout trades with no stop. I mean, it was just, you look at it and go, oh, my God, how can they keep doing it? And they do it over and over and over. You find people that would do like, You know, the same trade. Guy, a guy would buy a breakout. It, silver notoriously makes people see diamonds or, you know, I'm going to say a nasty word. I don't like to say this. Triangles in silver. And they'll buy this breakout and then sell this breakout. They get stopped out. Then they'll get short here. Then they'll get stopped out and buy here. Then they'll, and they'll do it seven times in a day. These are people with $10,000 accounts. I mean, just incredible. Paul says he's always been a, a, a good silver trader, but he's now finding other vehicles, mainly foreign exchange, far easier. I absolutely agree. That's why I, I try and... We're going to go there next. In fact... Yeah, here, Chef says... Oh, this is Vinny in New Jersey. Sorry. I've applied for my deer hunting to trading. Let the does go by and wait. The big bucks will be sure to follow. Absolutely. Yeah, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different outcome. But that's how people are. Look, that's people that go to the slot machines and pull that handle 300 times until they're out of quarters. You know, when I go talk at the Vegas Expo, it's one of the saddest things in the world when I have to walk through the casino and watch these people just mesmerized, throwing their money away. You can feel the casino just sucking their money out. It's very, very sad. Very sad. All right, let's do a bar by bar. Um, let's do... Close your eyes. Everybody got your eyes closed? I'll tell you when to open them. Um, da, da, da. okay, nah, too much action. No, no, no. Yeah, for those of you in Metastock, you can follow along. There we go. Hang on. So I'm going to, uh, you can open your eyes now. There we go. So let me uh, fix the chart here. Do, do, do. There we go. And here we are. So we're making higher highs. You're scared of the dark. 
<laughs> oh my god. No, don't get up and walk around with your eyes closed. Come on. Alright. We continue to make let me open this up just a little bit. There we go. Now we've got some structure. Alright. So what do we see? You, those of you on MetaTrader, you can follow along. This is a 30 minute. And as I said, there is a way to make 20 minute. If you don't know, we'll have it in the. Uh, at some point, we'll have it in the in the uh, tips. It's not hard. Now, first thing I notice is this. How about this? Higher lows, all the way up. Everybody see that? All the baselines are higher. And they're all holding. Every damn one. Canyon rims. Everyone's getting blown, so to speak. It's a technical term. So we've got higher highs, higher lows. Just for chuckles, I'll draw it. I don't think it's going to be meaningful. Or I shouldn't say that. I don't know if it's meaningful. I guess it's better than meaningful. That's not an awful meeting line, is it? I changed to a 30-minute chart. Yes, Rebecca. Just for, you know, just for chuckles, some, you know, a lot of people use MetaTrader because it's free data. So I put a 30-minute chart up here just for why not. Because they can do it's easier for them. I found the indicator for MT4 that allows 20 minute, though I haven't used it yet. Don, send send it to us, will you? Or send us a link. Thank you, Don. Because there's a lot of people that use MT4 that go, oh, I can't do 20 minutes. Yes, you can. You just don't know how. We'll show you. Catalan knows how to do it. It's not that hard. Okay, so here we are in this median line. You can see the touches. It blew through once, but let's take a look at the quality down here. Look at these bars while I grab this question. Three drives up with a possible inside sliding parable. Let me get there. Hang on. Look down here. We had one violation, but look at it. No closes below. Great closes, great separation. Closes, meh, meh on that separation. Closes just about on the line. Closes with magnificent separation. Would you go along here? 145.82, 145.60, 59. Uh, 25 pips stop on a 30 minutes. It's at the it's at the far end of my of my likey, so to speak. Unless you like the unless you liked this close here, then you'd be getting along at 145. It's still 84 with a stop below 60. It's still 25 pips. So it's a 25 pip stop. If you're willing to swallow it and you think this is a strong uptrend, it's a 25 pip. Dallas says people need to Google period converter metatrader. They'll find 100 links. There you go. There you go. So now we come up. We get to the median line. We had one to close above it, then we break back below. And here's our consolidation after it's still at, it's actually actually all it is actually is just this baseline dragged out. That's the bottom. And here's the top of the consolidation. You can see it doesn't last very long, but it's a nice switchback afterwards for a while. Then we pop the bottom, pop the top. We can't make it, we're not making it above the median line. Pay attention because we didn't do that well here as well. It's having trouble over the median line. We get back to the median line, no closes above it, just like down here. So this, this is like trying to break out of a diamond. It's trying, it's trying, it's trying, but it can't find the rocket fuel, the efficiency. Remember, Andrews was a thermodynamics professor. Okay, take care, Daniel. Now we pop back down, blow through the bottom of the range, hit stops. When we go through here, 
people get stopped out, that's what this action is. Look at these bars. We come down, look at the close, come down lower, look at the close, great separation again. There's buyers down here. If you're paying attention, bar by bar, let's look at this if you were watching this bar by bar. Comes down. Wide range bar higher. Okay, Yahoo! But it's still within the range, right? Now watch. Think about it. Pops up, but look where it closes, right back in the range. If you're long, yeah, you got to be scratching your head, and you're probably going to wet your pants, and the chef said, wash and rinse. Well, there were plenty of people that were willing to sell against this canyon, absolutely. Whereas Mirror would say, poop the bed. So watch, next bar. Now look at this bar. Another wide range bar lower. Closes in the lower third. Still within the range, but you don't like this action. If you're, if you're long here. And the other th the thing going on is the boys and girls that are breakout stop loss entry sellers are selling now right here they might have sat through this one but at this point they're getting short now it closes back up here that may or may not have stopped them out but then watch they got to get short on this one and look where it stops with great separation it stops right at the median line perfectly we haven't had any closes below this median line, this lower median line parallel at all. Hits it perfectly. Closes right back in the range with great separation. Now, I'm going to tell you, if you're a breakout seller, you got to hate that. Wash and rinse. Now we got a new baseline. We, this baseline basically, it looks like it hasn't held, but this is just slop. That's how much slop is in this market. We came down, but we can't close below this baseline. There's buyers down here. So they washed and rinsed people out of their long positions. And even better, we've talked about this before, if you can get on the other side of the market. Let me ask you a question. What does what does it mean by great separation? Hi, Larissa. How are you? You must be new, huh? Here we go. Ready? Larissa, great separation is look at where it touched the line. Look where it closed. Touch the line at... 146.39 closed at 146.55 that's a great amount of separation more than seven pips great separation Matt says if I'm licking my chops do you get aggressive and buy somewhere on the next bar if you see the wash and rinse and all those buyers if you can afford to stop yes otherwise you're just chasing yourself around in a circle Okay, so stop and think about this. I got a question for all of you. Not when the bar closes. When we get right down here, when price hits the median line, what is this market? What are the positions in this market? I'll answer that in a second time. Nobody's long, Chef. Well, median trader, traders may be long. About 95% are short. I absolutely agree. They're short or they're out. Big money? Okay. The, okay. The big money and hopefully median line traders are buying. Yes. But 95% of the market is either been stopped out of their longs or they've done the idiot sell the new lows trade. And for a second, they thought they were in heaven. Just because of the range of it. That's right, Matt. Yeah. Failed double top. Did, got up to the tops and failed. Now we've broken out of the range to the downside. They think this is a slam dunk. How's that? Now, this is where it becomes interesting and important. If you can get ahead of the market, then... When the market catches up, it'll push you to profits. Does that make any sense? 
if you can get the ball before anybody else has it, then when they figure out that you're running this way and they have to chase you, they'll push you to profitability. So everybody's short down here. If you're buying at the media line, if you had a stop, now I'm, you know, don't throw out the, hey, where's the stop? Okay, let, let's say we had a stop here. And you have your hands out and say, hey, come and hit me, baby. I know everybody else is selling. That's fine. I want to get long. Okay? Yeah. So when they turn, look at this close. There's some uncomfortable people here. Some people are already getting stopped out. Now watch. When they turn, they just push you to profits. Go where the puck is going, yes. But down here, when everybody's getting short, if you have a high probability trade, especially if it has low risk, don't pay attention to what everybody else is doing. Don't get all excited about this being a down bar. Instead, look at the quality of the formation, the quality of the stop, the quality of the setup. And if you see a long setup, I don't care what this is doing. If you have a long setup with a low risk opportunity and a setup that you recognize, get long because then the market's going to be chasing you. Now look at the close on this bar. This is what you're looking for. If you're an intraday trader, this is what you're looking for. This type of setup, if it had a stop, is exactly what you're looking for because it can drive you to profits in one bar. And you can do this over and over and over. All It is a pendulum swing. Somebody says it looks just like a pendulum swing. That's right. It's ball. The initial part is fast, and the one you're willing to you're well into the swing is slow. You want to be at the beginning of the fast move. That's exactly right. You want to be at the bottom of the pendulum before it changes direction. That's exactly right. Now, what you do up here is personal. Whether or not this was a range trade for you or you're getting long for the big move. But the key is to get in here and get ahead of all your brethren, so to speak. A retest would have been nice, yeah, absolutely. Or if you had structure over here, if you just had stru let's say that, let's say that this was a swing low, so it looked like this over here. Then I just buy the line. You know, if this was a 20 pip stop or 15 pip stop, if you had a swing sitting over here, buy the line, be a couple pips inside the line, buy it, put your stop under the swing. Then when the market turns, you're golden. So, here's the key. Most visible was good separation bar. Well, I think, actually, we made nothing but higher highs and higher lows. So, you're looking for this type of sell-off with your hands out saying, give it to me. Come on, baby, give it to me. Now, again, we don't have a stop here. That's the problem. If we had a formation here, like this right here, if you hit, if this was the pullback right here, sitting over here, then you'd have a nice little gentle stop. You just have your hands out there and saying, thank you very much. And that's what we're looking for. And then now when you get up here, it is a head scratcher because you've got this high and this high. So let's say, let's say you ripped out, you got in at 146.43. Now you've got 85 pips in it. Excuse me, 45 pips in it. So it depends on how you frame the trade. Did you frame the trade as going back to the canyon? Did you just frame the trade as a range trade? It depends on how much you risk and how you framed it. Yeah, there's no closes below this lower median line parallel anywhere. That's right. Last bar, buy at the structure. That's not awful. Okay, you see this bar close. Let me go back one. You see this bar close. You could do that. Buy at the bottom of the range right here. 146.52. Stop under 146.30. So that's a 25 pip stop. You could do that. Yeah. Then, next bar, you get filled. Yep. You could do that. Absolutely. Magnus. If short, then do you go to break even. Where would you be short, Magnus? Take profits at the prior high because no market is trending hard. If you're, if you're considering taking profits, 
me, I'd be right about here. And the reason why is it's very rangy until it takes out this high. So I wouldn't try even squeeze out the prior, this, uh, this high or this high. It'd be a few pips above. Oh, uh, yeah, you have to be at break even at this point. Yes, Magnus, I'm sorry. When this bar closes, go to break even. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Yep. Three drives to the top. And less efficiency toward the upper median line. Well, toward the median line. Um, well, we'll know after a couple more bars. We need a, another bar or two before we know about about the efficiency. Let's see what we get. But this would, I mean, if, if you're just an intraday, you know, not, I don't want to say the word in derogatory fashion, scalper, like 5 to 15 minutes, this is easy money, yes. Or 5 to 30 minutes, yeah. Line resistance, okay. So here's like that. And say, hey, I want to get out and look, but look, look where I put my stop. I didn't have to draw that, Paul. There you go. Absolutely. In fact, Paul, I believe you mentioned you suggested that Friday, and I had the same stop. So, yeah, absolutely. All right. So let's take a look at the next bar. Higher high. Look at the close. We want to just lock into these bars and pay attention to the opening, the close, the highs and lows. And say what is going on here. We're still within the range. We didn't get filled. We got to be at break even, right? So coming down, we took out the stops and that made a void going up. Yes, not only that, people that wanted to be got long got stopped out. And people that were breakout sellers got short. Then when the market turned back up, the people that got short had to get long or had to, had to buy to get out. And the people that wanted to be long went, God damn it, I just got rinsed. So they chased the market. And that pushes it for you. Does that make sense? Do I need to watch my language today, huh? Target under 147. Move up the stop. Well, what do you think about stop profits here? Can I zoom up a bit? Yeah. How's that? Hi, Chan. How are you? Thurs Thursdays are the free swing days. I'm sorry, Dallas. Yeah. Okay. Where are you, you going to move it to, though? Tell me where you're going to move it. I'm at break even. What could you do? Well, I got nothing to hide to stop behind. That last bar is a push down. Well, I know it's a push down, but I got nowhere to go to. I'm still a break even. 146.55. Just because? Okay, so. Ron's at 146.55. I'm at break even. Uh, Don Crispin's at seven pips higher, 146.47, which is underneath the structure as well. Which is on a, that's not an awful idea. Just above the lows to the left. Uh, so like 140, 146.51, something something like that. Way left. Well, this is a good balance line. I wouldn't be against, you know, if, you, if you're itching, I wouldn't be 146.49, something like that. I'd be okay with that, or 146.47. Lock, you know, if you, that's fine. You, can, you know, you want to be below the balance line, not above the balance line. This, is, this should be support. You want to be below these two. This bottom and this bottom, if you want if you want to do that, right? Now, profit target. You got a problem with this one? 
lows to the left. That I, that is above lows to the left. Profit targets. We've got somebody at 47, somebody else at 55. I'm at break even. Green is fine with me. Anybody else got another idea? Or are we fine with that? Paul says, if we're trading median lines, these stops are still inside the fork. There's nothing to stop the euro dropping back down to the lower median line parallel, which is above our entry and reversing that or structure, which we don't have. That's why I'm at break even. I agree. I like what we got. I'm going with what we got. Okay, here we go. Next bar. I mean, I might get stopped out, but that's okay. I'm at lotto now, right? Next bar. Okay. Bingo. Rang the bell. Free is me, says Russ. I like that. So we got the lotto. We got our money. Easy money. This is what we want to do. We want to get in front of the market and let the wave push you. Anytime you can do it. All right, let's see if something else develops. Should we go on some more, guys? Okay, let's see what we get. Because I have no idea what's going, what's about to happen. I mean, you know, I've been half asleep the last two weeks, so I'm, I'm trading blind. Okay, so we blow much higher now. Now, this is interesting. Watch. We get above the median line, but we're having trouble up here. And... Just to add that, I don't know. That's not parallel. Doesn't really do much from down there. Okay. We want to have these sloped, if you will. This is not connected to anything, that's why. We want to have these sloped baselines, if you will, to just give us a feel for how efficient price is in the direction of the median lines. Now I want to open this up I'm using somebody else's tip, which is use the, the bottom and the tops here to change my range, and then they'll hold. Okay. Okay. Expanding pivots, yes. We've got a new low, now a new high. It's very sloppy. Now, when it gets up here, you don't want to be too excited. If you didn't take your profit here, you definitely want to take your profit at the median line. There's nothing wrong with using the median line. There's nothing wrong with using what we used. Nothing wrong with using a retest of this canyon rim. Not, there's absolutely nothing wrong with using the median line. Andrews, and this is, you've seen this work three or four times on this fork alone. Andrews says 80% probability you're going to go from the lower median line parallel to the median line. Nothing wrong with just saying, give me the X. You know what? You guys go ahead and take your profit here. I'm taking my extra 30 pips. Nothing wrong with that. Do I want to draw on an... See, yeah, you know, absolutely. Paul says, I know what Andrews would use. Sure, absolutely. Take my money here. Well, to be honest, Paul, he's a stop and reverse, so he, he'd still be in. But, yeah, I mean, he's expecting it to go at least here. Yep. Now, do I, Philip says, do I want to draw on a new downsloping pitchfork? Well, making new highs. If I get some bars down here, I probably would. You can draw one in. I'll draw one in for you, Philip. There you go. That's what it looks like. I probably wouldn't until I get one more close down here. But let's see what we get. There's nothing wrong with drawing them. You can always erase them. Don't forget. So let's look. So we got about 15 more minutes before Sean comes downstairs and taps me on the shoulder. There we go. Now we get the second close down here. Philip, now I'd be drawing it. So good guys. No, that's fine. No, no, Philip. Here's my, here's my rule. You can always erase them. So, no problem. There's nothing wrong with drawing it and saying, what if this exhaustion bar, because look at the wide range bar, it closes below its middle, really, and back within underneath the baseline and underneath the median line, saying, what if that's the top? Draw it in. Absolutely. 
is this a good place for a corner trade? We need some more bars to know. Let's watch. Okay. Takes out the prior low, but closes on the high. Now we might want to start to think about the potential for A, corner trade, or B, remember, we didn't make it here yet. We might. In fact, let's also I get it right eventually. Come on. We also didn't get to this one. Okay, so let's leave those in there just as reference points. At the moment, we're still kind of in a wedgie, right? So now we're going to watch it develop here because the question is, are we still in the up move? Or is this an area where a corner trade could form right at the median line and the downsloping upper median line parallel? So far, this red fork hasn't been tested, so we don't know. Top, double the range. Yep, yep, okay, I see that. See it? Next bar. Doesn't tell us much. Close is almost the same as the open. Tiny, tiny bit of higher, but we're getting multiple. See, this, this is starting to look cornerish. Same tops. But, Here's my question for all of you. Would that bar suggest buyers? Mm. Suggest range trading to me. Let me ask you a question. Do you see anything yet? High or high, yes. Do you see anything yet that tells you that there's a reason to go short that there are sellers? Is, any, is there anything? Are you itching to go short? I mean, in the back of your mind, okay, Theo says yes. Okay, that's fine. In the back of your mind, you may say, um, the median line might hold, so maybe I want to get short here. But does price action yet tell you? No. Loss of efficiency, that's a maybe. Yeah, that's a maybe. Take out the low from two bars ago, and then you'll be interested. Okay. And we're making higher highs. That's right. All right, so let's see what we get. So e this is one of those things where I, I want to point out, Eve, again, even though in, the, in your mind, this is like uh, people asking about correlation earlier. In your mind, you might be thinking, hmm, I think I've seen the top. You need price action to verify it for you. You're above the range. You're making higher highs. The pullback hasn't breaking any lows. A hold at the energy point is very viable. Absolutely. But we need price action to show us. Or a tiny stop. It's free to wait for setup. That's right. Caution. Nothing to wait. Opportunity losses don't cost. Our alternating closes? Yes. But we need a couple more in here. If we get one or two more in here, then I might get a little more interested. All right, let's look at the next bar. Okay, we're right at the energy point. We touched the median line. We're closing a couple pips below it. Nobody's in control. That's kind of what I think at the moment. Anybody want to be short here? Come on, don't hold back. I got a lot of no's. Any, anybody? Anybody? Reese, you want to sell here with a stop above the high? Okay, so Reese is short at 147.30 with a stop at, uh, oh, he's got a 10 pip stop, so 147.40. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Theo's in with you. Okay. Small risk. Absolutely. Okay. Here we go. Um, the high, 37, you guys are still alive, and look at the separation, so look at this high, 
and look at the close all the way down here with great separation. Up here, your heart's beating fast. You should just relax and go, just relax. Once again, we failed to close above the median line. Now, what I don't like is it's making higher highs. What I do like is the separation. Third higher high, somebody says. Lower close bar. Okay. Does anybody else want to be short now? Reset the fork. Uh, I'll draw on a new fork. How's that? Because some because we already have some trades in. Off of that fork. You want to draw this? That's fine. And I'll make it... That's fine, too. Now, anybody want to do anything? Not yet. Okay. My heart doesn't beat fast if I have the stop in place. Good, John. See, that's how it should be. Once you put your stop in, you shouldn't worry about it. Just go ahead and take me out if you have to take me out. I'm with that. All right, so here's Paul. These trades are much like dating. You don't ask every guy or girl out. You look for certain aspects, looks, intelligence, sense of humor, that make you feel that the match will be a high probability. Taking everything that looks like a trade is akin to like being drunk and asking everybody to dance. It won't end well, and you'll likely regret it in the morning. <laughs> uh, and not an analogy I'll put in the book, but probably absolutely one that everybody can understand. <laughs> Philip. Philip says, I do ask every girl out. It's a numbers game. <laughs> oh, my God. Where's Jerry this morning? I don't know. I haven't. Jerry, you here? He may just be tired. <laughs> Scott Scott says, obviously, he doesn't live in Tampa. Okay, I'm, I'm not going there, Scott. And good morning, by the way. Oh, Jerry's here. He's just listening. That's what I thought. I... No, it's fine. <laughs> Reminding Don of his teenage years. There you go. Okay, so up here, Reese is still alive. He loves this close. Theo's still alive. He loves this close. Let's see what we get going. Next bar. Eh, makes a new low. Closes unchanged. All right, so let's take a look. The close, you're, you're short at 40. The close is at 21. That's the good. No, that can't be right. You guys got short at. I do this wrong. 25. Give me a second, sorry. Energy point, 30, 28. Oh, you're, you're short at 30. Sorry, you're short at 30 and your stop's at 40. Okay. And you, the high was 37. This closes at 22. Sorry about that. Waiting for the next bar. Okay, stops at 40. Yes. I just got lost there. That's right. George is short at 147.27. I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt, George. And you're short at 30. How's that? You want to be short, George? Or are you just pointing out that I got lost? Oh, you're just pointing out. Okay. No, he was just pointing out where my cursor was. Well, I gave them the benefit of the doubt and put, them in a, put their order in at 30. And then I said the stop was at 40. So we'll just leave that. All right, so next bar. It's still, we're not, we don't know anything. Took out the low, but closed unchanged. What oh, the Scooby Doo would say, rut roll, right? Hasn't done any damage yet. Anybody want to get short up here at the energy point? 
Close is at uh, 30, right where they're short. I just am being generous. And the high was at 33. Okay, Bob is short right now at the median line. At the uh, yeah, at the median line, at 32 with a stop at 42. Bob. Okay. Me, somebody wants to know what I would be doing. Uh, I don't see any direction here yet, other than a continued. Well, it's a mess, but a little bit, a slightly higher bit of action. I see the median line being the resistance, but nothing makes me want to trade yet. I don't have an itch to get short. I don't have any itch yet to scratch. Mike's also short at uh, 40, 32 with a stop at 42. I just don't want to trade here. Paul doesn't want to trade here. Would I move my stop to 146.85? Yeah. Dave, I don't know what that means. I no no, I'm more I already took my profit on the long. And I got no interest in trading now. I'm just out. Some people are short of thirty. That's right, David. I got out uh, remember I put in the sliding line? I don't know where where it disappeared. Okay, here we go. Some people are short at 30, some people are short at 32, both with 10 pip stops. Makes a slightly new high, but closes with great separation. All right. And once again, we're failing on the median line. So the, if you're hanging your head on that, that's okay. I'm not wild about it still making new highs, but it just looks like a mess. So I'd still be waiting. Show me the money first. Dallas, you'll sell it if it gets, you want You want to get short at 31 if it retests the green median line, upper median line. Is that right, Dallas? All right. Paul says, if you're short against the blue median line, it is upsloping. It should get collared. That's absolutely right. Matt says, I'm waiting to sell. Separation by corner trade, I'm with Dallas. Okay, so <clears throat> Dallas is going to get a short at uh, 31 if it gets there. And it doesn't. Okay, boys, those of you that be short, if you framed your trade, what's your profit target? It's not over yet, Dallas. Relax. Median line parallel? You mean the lower one? Yeah, okay. I'm good with that, Bob. Okay, take care, Mark. 146.75 resets. There you go. 146.75. Yeah, the, the median line parallel. Okay. Oh, 75. Uh, right in here. Okay. Here's resets right in here. And I'm going to make it green for you, buddy. And Bob wants to go to the energy point. Theo wants to go to the energy point. There we go. All right, those are the two profit targets, okay? Krishna says if it goes back up to the upper median line parallel, he'll get short. Okay. Still did not take out a high. Okay. Stops move to break even, Russ says. Um, Reese, you're gonna move to break even, you're sticking with what you're sticking with your 10 pip stop. Reese says he's staying with what is stop. I'm with you. Do I think I think you're too conservative? No, I wasn't ready to trade till I saw this. Krishna? Now, I'm, if it starts to make another low, if it makes one more lower bar, then I might be get, might be interested. Up in here, it was just messy to me. I'm, if I missed a trade, that's all right. It doesn't cost me anything. These guys are more aggressive to me. This is a style thing, and they may reap the profits. They may be ahead of the market, just like I was down in here, 
and the market may push them to profits, okay? So it's a style thing. If you can get ahead of the market, the market will push you to profits. Let's see what we get. New low by one ticket, looks like, or one pip. Great separation on the upside. That's nothing. That's no big deal. You guys, you that, anybody that wanted to get short up here at the green downsloping parallel may get it. New low closes good separation. You can see we're making one, two, three new lows in a row. Again, a new low, lower highs, lower lows. Inside bar double tops closes on its low. Okay, takes out the double tops. Now we've got double bottoms. See them down here? Well, the market's just trapped in here, I think. Here's our retest, Krishna. We're short at 21 with a stop above. What about 15, 16 tick? Tick stop, pip stop. Bob's at break even now, okay. <clears throat> Where do you want to get long, Bob? I mean, Don, sorry. Oh, okay. Stop's too large, okay. Here we go. Next bar. Lower high, retest the median line, the upper median line parallel. Closes with good separation. Okay, that's good. Dallas is short, yes. Wide range bar, one, two, three bars lower. Takes out all the lows. Closes in the middle. 147.10 is the close. Reese says now he's moving his target down to the blue median line. Okay. So you're going to here. I got that right? Okay. Inside trades. First close above this green upper median line parallel. I don't think it's that significant. Take a look at the sliding parallel. So far, at least, is not the end of the world. Oops, what a hit. Wide range bar higher. Okay. 21. What's the high? You're still short. Everybody's still short. Even the break evens. But I st if, if I was short and my plan was originally, and if I had moved my stops, I wouldn't change them now. I'm not going to jump out. That's why I have everything written down. I'm just staying with it. Now, I'm not going to get excited about this move up here. I'm not going to get excited when it's right here. Hey, buddy. My buddy Sean here. I'll be up in about two minutes. We're going to finish. No, I'll be up in about two minutes. We got. You can stay and watch. Okay. Sure two oh my God. Can you guys hear Sean? <laughs> okay. Here we go. Let's go. Double tops. Inside bar. And at least whoever shorted twenty one is gone. This close is at, this high is at thirty three. So Reese, you're, somebody went to break even. They're gone. Reese is still good. People are saying hi to you, Sean. Bob's busted. Is Sean going to participate in the DVD? Yes, he is. Why did nobody box in profits? Um, I don't know. Here we go. Next bar. High was 34. Reese is still alive. Head and lower. Uh-oh. Whoa! High of 36. But, but good separation on the close. Double tops now. We don't want those. If they bust those double tops, Reese, you're dead. Uh, I would if I could, but 
Uh, um, yep. Reese, dead. So, me, I just never got the itch to do anything. I, don't, there, I have no problem, and Reese had plenty of opportunity uh, to play. It's unfortunate that it never gave us any structure for him to move down. You saw him move his profit target up. I agreed with him. There was never any structure to go above. You might have maybe considered going above here. But if he'd gone above here, I would have gone 10 pips. Would, would it would have been the same as break even. So, eh. I'm neither here nor there. I think it's just the way it is. And, and the euro is tough to trade, I think. So. All right, yep, yep, Paul, you're absolutely right. I just got the one-minute warning from my son. Guys, it's Monday. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you all tomorrow. Anybody that's in premium session? I appreciate all the uh, good wishes. I am feeling better, as you can tell by my voice. Have a wonderful week if you're not in the premium sessions. I'm Tim Morge, marketgeometry.com. I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.